Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's build video, I have a follow-up to my Starship Troopers combat chest armor. I'm gonna be making the M3 tactical helmet, which means not only am I rated to repair the helmet, I'm able to fabricate one myself. And just like the chest armor, the helmet is made completely out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials. And because the helmet is just foam, it is extremely lightweight. But I'm not gonna lie to you, this helmet pattern is one of the more difficult ones to put together on my channel. Channel, and that's because the very top of it is a somewhat complex compound curve. But if you can put this helmet together, you should be very proud of yourself. And if you would like to make your own, I of course have free PDF files available over on my website that you can download to build right along with me. So if you'd like to become a citizen, you want your own Starship Troopers armor, I want to show you what it takes to put it together. Let's go ahead and get started. I made a rough and dirty prototype before moving on to the final version. We're going to start by taking part A and tracing that onto some 2mm foam. Making sure to mark all the slats and vent cutouts. For the slats on the front, I trace each line with a hobby blade and then carefully cut out and remove all the vents on the sides. Using a heat gun, I heat seal the foam, but more importantly, it opens up the slats that I cut on the front. This 2mm piece is going to be attached to some 10mm foam. Notice that I have a lot of room around the template and that's going to be important because the foam underneath needs to be curved. I can now go ahead and apply some super glue to the back side of part A. Then after rounding the 10mm piece, I can apply the 2mm on top. It's important though to apply this while the foam is curved. This is gonna help this piece keep its shape and it's gonna be the main base for the helmet. Now another thing to note is you could just cut all of this out of 10 millimeter foam and score in your details. And here you can see, because the vents were cut out, it gives a nice layered effect. Now a thing to notice is that the bottom of this template is cut at a 90 degree, but the cutout at the top is all at a 25 degree angle. Once this piece is attached in the back, it makes the top of it almost flat. I can now glue the two halves together using some super glue and accelerator. Part B will now be traced and cut out of some 10 mm foam, making sure to mark the ear holes. This piece is going to wrap around the outside of part A, but not before I use my rotary tool to sand an angle into this lower section. By sanding the foam at an angle and attaching the part B piece to this area, it's going to make the lower half of the helmet have an inward angle. I start in the back and I slowly work my way around the helmet, lining the top of the Part B piece to the angle that I sanded. Here I'm applying super glue, but you could also use contact cement. I just wanted a really quick bond. With part B attached, you can see how this lower part of the helmet angles in as it curves around. Using my rotary tool and a sanding sponge, I run it off this lower corner all the way around the bottom section of part B. Now part C can also be traced and cut out of some 10 millimeter foam. This piece will also have the bottom of it rounded over with a rotary tool, 
as well as a beveled angle sanded into the top. Just like how Part B attached, this is going to help Part C conform to the shape of the helmet. I start off by gluing in the back and I work my way to the front. Here's where I can see how it's going to line up with Part A, and in my case I cut away the excess, but I've already taken that into consideration for the template. The lower corner can now be rounded over with a rotary tool, and the front of Part C can be glued into place. With parts A, B, and C assembled, the excess foam on part B can now have adhesive applied to it. This excess foam is going to wrap around to the inside of the helmet and be glued into place. Now we're going to work on the back of the helmet, which is going to consist of part D, and this is going to be traced onto some 2mm foam. Just like part A, I'm going to score and heat the foam to open it up, and then I'm going to attach this to some 10mm foam. Again, if you're not worried about the layered look, you could just make this piece out of the 10mm foam. The 2mm foam can now be glued onto the 10mm foam while the foam is curved. Just like the main section of the helmet, this is going to help the foam retain its shape. The lower section on part D is sanded at an angle and then the entire piece can be cut out with a well sharpened hobby blade. While heat sealing this piece of foam, you can see that it has the angle, but it has a flat section along the bottom that's going to be glued to the back of the helmet. Super glue is then applied along this bottom ledge, and it can be attached at either end and then pressed together in the middle. Part E is going to make up two little triangles that are going to go on either side. These are traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. After being sanded and heat sealed, they're going to fit right down into this little nook that's going to attach the back of the helmet to the front. Using a hole punch, I cut Part F out of some 2mm foam. These little details are going to be super glued right at the back of Part E. With the main body of the helmet glued together, it's now time to work on the top. I'm going to take part G and trace that onto some 6mm foam. This piece has several cutouts that are very important to get the overall completed shape. Now it's important to note for the cutouts where the two pieces meet and the darts are going to have a 90 degree cut, but all along the exterior is going to be a 25 degree angle cut. This is going to make the bottom flat when it's all glued together. Using some weld wood contact cement, I apply adhesive to the darts and the seam in the middle. Once the contact cement had dried, I could then press the foam together. I start by gluing the darts together on each piece, firmly pressing the foam together in the middle and then working my way to the outside. For the central seam, I start in the front, and I slowly work my way to the back. Take your time with this because we want these seams to be as minimal as possible, even though we're going to clean them up later. And to clean up my seams, I'm going to use a smooth sanding drum on my rotary tool and a sanding sponge. If you have not watched my video on how I make my own custom sanding drums, I'm going to leave a link for that down in the description. And I promise you, if you work with a lot of foam, it's going to change your life. And once you get to this point, be proud because this is not an easy piece to put together. Before I can attach the dome, I need to add a foam strip that goes all the way around the top. This is going to make that inset detail that you see that wraps around the helmet. 
The strip is going to be made out of 6mm foam, approximately a quarter of an inch by about 20 inches in length. You're going to cut away the excess. This is going to be super glued all around the innermost section on the top of the helmet. I start on one side of part E and I work my way around the helmet. When I got to the end I just cut off the foam that I didn't need and I glued it into place. This lip now gives me a nice flat area to attach the top dome. So I can now apply some adhesive and I start at the front of the helmet, adding more adhesive as I work my way around. And here's where if it doesn't fit quite right on yours, trim it, sand it, it's just foam. And with the front attached I can now start to attach the back half of the dome in the exact same way. Here you can see with the dome attached how it all lines up. Now it may not be perfect but who cares this is just for having fun. Now it's time to work on the ears and I find the center of each hole. This will help me line up a Forstner bit so I can drill all the way through. You could also just use a normal drill and clean it up with a rotary tool. I'm going to use one of my smooth sanding drums and have it slope in towards that middle hole. This is going to give it a nice little concave detail. I'm now going to take the template for part H and transfer that onto some 2mm foam. This is going to make up a raised section for the ear detail. After they have been heat sealed they can then be glued onto the concave areas. And here's a better example of how they slope in towards the middle. With the two part H pieces in place I can now re-establish that central hole using my Forstner bit. I use my smooth sanding drum once again to knock down the outer edge of part H. This is just going to help give it a smoother transition onto this piece. The two part I pieces are going to make up the cheek guards and these are going to be traced and cut out of some 10mm foam. After being cut out, the edges are all rounded over with my rotary tool and then heat seal before being glued into place. You can see here that the cheat guard slightly angles down. And I'd probably recommend to have the helmet on and then place these so it fits your face properly. To finish off the front of the helmet, there are two small detail rectangles on either side. These are going to be made out of part J, which is going to be traced and cut out of some 2mm foam. Once adhesive is applied, I just line it up with the middle of this front section and then round it over with my fingers. For the screen detail in the ear, I wanted to take it a little bit further, so I'm going to be kit bashing using some cap thread gaskets and some drywall sanding screen. Both of these can be found at any hardware store. And if you didn't want to go this far, you of course could just cut this out of foam. Now don't use scissors to cut this because you'll dull them in no time, so I've got some heavy duty snips. So after getting the size correct and then super gluing the gasket to the screen, they could be cut out. For this process, I just work my way slowly around the outside of the gasket. And with these kit bash details complete, they can now be super glued to either side of the helmet. It's not a lot, but an extra little detail like this can really help your prop stand out. Another detail I rarely see on the replica helmets is the mic that's supposed to be on the right side. To fabricate the stem on mine, I'm going to be using some 3 16 inch wooden dowel. Then I could figure out how much you need to stick away from the helmet, and I could mark that and cut away the excess. There's a layered detail at the base of the mic that I created using a strip of 2mm foam. And for the mic itself, I cut a block of 10mm foam for the end. The block of foam was also drilled out so I could insert the dowel into it. To simulate the ridges on the sides, I'm going to be using my heat tool and I make sure to wear my respirator, which you always want to do when heating or sanding foam. And the heat tool works great, it's as simple as working my way around the block and creating the hole in the end. I can now glue the block on the end of the dowel and I used my smooth sanding drum to get a tapered effect on this piece. After I was satisfied with the look, the dowel could then be glued into the side of the helmet. Part K is going to make up the chin strap and this is going to be traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. 
If necessary, you may want to change the shape and size of this just a little bit so it fits you better. The chin strap is cut out using a well-sharpened hobby blade. And I'm using my heat tool once again to create the whole detail in the middle. The edges on the entire piece can now be rounded over with the rotary tool, and you can see how this whole piece goes together. Once I was satisfied with the look, I could then glue the entire thing together. Just like the cheek guards, I'd probably recommend to mark this with the helmet on so that it fits you properly. Now for my build, I'm going to glue the left side of the chin guard into place. The right side is going to be attached with some Velcro. Now the Velcro I have is a little too wide, so I'm going to cut it to length and then trim away the excess. I lightly score the inside of the cheek guard using a hobby blade, and I'm going to do a double adhesive method of super glue and hot glue. This is going to help make sure that the Velcro won't ever pull away from the foam. I mark placement for the other side of the Velcro, and then repeat the attachment process. With the fabrication of the M3 helmet complete, it's now time to seal and paint. And to seal it, I'm going to do three light coats of Plasti Dip. After the Plasti Dip is cured, I'm going to do a dusting of Valspar Flat Black. This is going to help prep the surface for additional layers. And just like the armor, the first layer is going to be Krylon Ultra Flat Green Camo. Liquitex Mars Black is going to be used to cover the mic, the ear covers, and the chin strap. Not much water is added to this pigment because I want it to be pretty opaque overall. For the stem of the mic, I'm going to be using some Liquitex Heavy Body Iridescent Rich Silver. For the final layer of paint, I tape off the chin strap and the mic. I'm going to be using some Valspar Flat Dark Gray. Just like the green beforehand, this is going to be dusted onto the surface. The helmets in the movies also have a very slight sheen to them, so I'm going to add a very light dusting of Valspar Gloss. And just like the armor, I want it to have that dusty look like it had been down on Planet P, so I'm going to be using some Fuller's Earth Dust. A large makeup brush is used to apply the dust to the helmet. I don't really want to try to cover the entire helmet, I just want it to get down into the details. This dust also has the tendency to knock that gloss back just a little bit, which is great and gives it more of a satin finish. And this stuff does get everywhere, so I'd recommend to have some paper down and definitely wear some kind of dust mask. But in the end, it does a great job giving the prop a little bit of that elemental wear. So you all can see what it takes to put together your own custom M3 tactical helmet from Starship Troopers. And the thing I love about this costume is that it's great for so many different weather conditions. If it's cold outside or the convention's cold, you can grab the jacket and bundle up. If it's hot, like down in Dragon Con, where I intend to wear mine, the black shirt, armor, helmet, some gray pants is probably going to be good to go. And that reminds me, if you are going to be at Dragon Con, we hope to have a group of SKS Roughnecks down there. So I'll, of course, have information leading up to that the closer we get to Dragon Con. But if you are building any of my builds or utilizing HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD Foam.